is uh, so the first topic is data acquisition uh, and fundamentally the uh, exercise is not that long and the uh, let's see where is my exercise there so basically exercise is such to make uh, a, a a to d converter running have an analog sensor on it, it it's a, 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 a just simple uh, simple analog temperature sensor on a to d converter uh, but the trick now is we do some oversampling and basically decimation uh, so uh, the, the downsampling of that uh, to get just uh, the uh, those those uh, uh, results only uh, once or twice a second yes two samples per second so a to d converter is running uh, freely and uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, in software you would do some decimation meaning just running average of over uh, the uh, half a second uh, time and then just display that one into LCD. Okay, so that's the task. A um, couple of things before we go there. Good. So the timing of that sampling clock would be taken. Uh, you can use either the sleep timer, but now you also know how to make the uh, timer interrupts. So the timing interrupt would be better. Although sleep timer, it might be easier. It, it depends. But for me, the timer interrupt is easier than sleep timer. <laughs> but but uh, you, you can pick your... Uh, uh, favorite. Um, let's see. I, I think I should draw a couple of things on the whiteboard thing. Couple of things on the whiteboard. I have a little bit. Uh, too simplified picture on on the uh, <laughs> on that exercise sheet. So we have a um, LM35 type analog uh, temperature sensor, which basically gives uh, the output voltage is uh, uh, basically. Let's see, 20 millivolts per centigrade. So 20 millivolts per centigrade degree. So zero volts would be zero degrees. And uh, well, there's also a way to bias this one negative. So it actually gives, can give uh, negative, negative, uh, 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 well, Finnish temperatures, <laughs> but we are Germany. We are Germany, so <laughs> we are okay with the, uh, this unipolar uh, uh, polar power supply. Okay, uh, one warning already here. If you reverse the polarity of the power supply, this will burn. There's absolutely no protection against the uh, wrong polarity on circuit so every single time when I use this one on education someone will burn the uh, device the last time it was m me it was myself <laughs> so t take a closer look at the uh, uh, very uh, careful look at the data sheet okay so uh, fundamentally uh, on any analog system if we have a sensor before t making the A to D conversion, you should have the uh, 
low pass filter. You should have. Um, I have removed that. There's a possibility to run the uh, low pass filter also on on the um, PSOC on the analog uh, blocks, but I have removed that part from this exercise. Uh, yeah, you can do it. You can do. I, I, if it's optional part, <laughs> let's make it optional. <laughs> if you really, really want to do it, yes, you can. Yeah, I, I can show you the uh, tricks how to do it. But anyways, uh, usually you will have the uh, this kind of uh, uh, the the construction. So anti-aliasing filter then sample and hold, and then A2D. All those sample and hold usually are one package. The A2D converter usually does it for you. Okay, and then basically, well, in our case, uh, we have this optional, <laughs> the, uh, so this can be optional, optional low pass filter. Uh, okay, then you ba can also, uh, since here we have something like 20 degrees Celsius, max 30 degrees, may maybe up to 40 degrees in this room. So the maximum voltage of that one is about 800 millivolts. And your A2D converter voltage range uh, it's roughly zero to four volts. You can put it like that. So you can actually uh, get some, some, some. Hmm, where's my? Oh, there. You can actually get some uh, extra resolution by putting the uh, proper programmable gain amplifier here, analog block PGA. In any case, you might actually need it because uh, this is the uh, easiest way of routing the signal from different locations to the uh, uh, A2D converter. Or, well, you can, depending on the A2D converter, uh, depending on the A2D converter, basically, you can also the uh, uh, this PGA may be part of the A2D converter. Could be. All right. So after that, you will have uh, the digital uh, result at rate, quite high sampling rate. That's roughly, say, about 100 samples per second. Oops, um, samples per second. Yes, yes. Okay. Depending on the, uh, again, on what kind of A2D converter do you choose. Your end product should have sample rate of two samples per second. So what you need to have here is a, uh, oh, I think the correct word is box car aperture so you will take the uh, 0 0.5 seconds and just calculate the sum of values and also the number of values And twice a second, you would just go. The out, output is basically just this uh, sum divi divided by num. Okay, that's the way to do this uh, downsampling in this case. Although, if you have uh, taken this digital signal processing class, you know that the uh, this is same as, uh, it's quite bad low pass filter. You could do much better with, you know, by really filtering this data instead of just taking some. But 
I'm not recommending making digital filters there yet. <laughs> that will be advanced stuff. Uh, have you taken the, uh, what is that called, oh, the uh, DSP problem solving with MATLAB course last fall? Did you take, no, not, not yet. It will be next, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, from Manfred Juncker, yes, yes, but not the uh, lab part, okay. Okay, uh, yeah, next for week 42. I'll be here giving the DSP problem solving with, with MATLAB. But you would be in Vietnam at that time, bro. No, you will be here, okay. Okay, good, excellent. So you can come to my class again, <laughs> except JFTU. <you. laughs> and you will be also there. If everything goes right, okay, good. Um, yeah, so that's the system, and well, that output then just is displayed on LCD. Okay, so let's see what parts we need. LN35. Hmm. LM35, here you go. Um, if you are not familiar on handling this kind of uh, electrostatically sensitive devices, you know that you take the uh, those overcoat off since it that looks like it's uh, <laughs> yeah take this one off since it, it's uh, you you might get some uh, you know discharge <laughs> yeah and then when you pick a uh, this kind of uh, device by hand, make sure that you pick all the all of those uh, legs at the same time. It doesn't guarantee that it, you wouldn't uh, destroy it, but it helps. Okay, pick it from the uh, that one. And also you have a uh, kind of uh, <laughs> bad kind of coat. There you go. Good. Uh, so that's the sensor. Um, let's take a closer look at the sensor. So, okay. Um, yeah. There's the link to a uh, data sheet of LM35 and that's it. Sorry, uh, not 20 millivolts, it's, it's 10 millivolts per centigrade. Where did I get that 20? So 10 millivolts per centigrade. So we have actually maximum about 400 millivolts. So we can actually here use a uh, gain of 10. Okay, good. And this is a TO90, uh, two packets, and if you ever use this one in Finland, you should use the negative bias. Um, and then the pin configuration, okay, there. Oh, and observe the all 92 packets. This is bottom view, meaning like this. Bottom means that you're, you're looking at the legs. Okay. So ground is now on my right hand side here. Yeah. Still on the right side. Good. <laughs> yeah. So that that was the tricky part. Um, 
Okay, the rest of that stuff actually goes into um part that we need PSOC uh designer. Uh on in this exercise you would be using uh this um mm -mm 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 -mm. Some generic, div oh, no, generic, but but the miscellaneous digital devices like LCD. Again, that is for displaying the result, and our LCD is still on port two. Uh, we also need a uh, 2D converter. Well, let's see. Uh, yeah, let's take first the a 2D converter. Uh, okay, several different types available. There's uh, incremental uh, A to D converter, which is uh, which is basically the single slope uh, integrating uh, A to D converter. Not really accurate, but it's simple. Uh, another one. Then there's actually delta sigmas, 11-bit delta sigma and 8-bit delta sigma uh, HUD converter. Dual ADC, um, I don't remember which, I think it was uh, dual delta sigma HUD converter. Uh, then there's easy HUD converter, that's also sigma delta. <laughs> but that one is easy to uh, use. Uh, if if I was given a free hand which to use, I would use the that easy to d converter. Actually, then you can also uh, select the uh, the what is your desired resolution versus what is the uh, uh, the the sample rate of this one. And yeah, this can be done uh, uh, self running easily. Okay, then there's a successive approximation register type of a to d converter, only six bits. Uh, S, but SIR, SAR is basically quite fast uh, converter uh, uh, compared to Delta Sigma, but it requires that sample hold. Okay, uh, then we have this uh, uh, three A to D converters. So this was dual, this is just triple, yes. Not trial, but <laughs> do all that trial. Hmm. <laughs> all right, so a three channel A to D converter, uh, two kinds. Okay, uh, let's click on the a easy A to D converter and then we can actually see if there is also the PGA a possibility on in front of that. If not, then we basic uh, we we will. Uh, Add that one there. Okay, uh, first thing, okay, we need to select the configuration. There are different configurations, uh, single stage modulator or uh, double stage modulator. Um, okay, uh, I have no idea what is the, uh, what is the real, performance difference here. I don't think that there is much. It's just different uh, a configuration. At least that doesn't say. Second order modulator requires two switch capacitor blocks, one more than the first order modulator. Vertically. Uh, hmm. Well, we can use that one since it takes the vertically. When you look, uh, look at the uh, these, so it takes two blocks instead of just one. We are not going to use the uh, much of these switch capacitor blocks in any case. So yeah, I think we can take this double stage modulator. Maybe. Oh wow, <laughs> that's nice. Um, this is actually quite simple quite nice since now we also can actually uh, run the input signal from this multiplexer, but 
using this multiplexer, we have a problem. So the problem is that uh, we cannot route this in uh, the, the uh, uh, data from uh, port 00, zero. Only odd pin numbers on that multiplexer. But we can always drag and drop this one here. Does it help? Yes, it did help, but it actually takes the output from this block. Oh, the input actually must be coming from that block. Wow. Let's let's try this way. Well, same thing. Okay, let's let's put it back there and then do some routing. So, depending on where you actually uh, put this one, uh, dictates where you get this this uh, signal from. So, input signal on these uh, columns can come from any analog pin, but signal to these blocks can come only on the uh, odd pins, right? Wait a minute. Well, this would be also even. Let's see if it fits on the last one. Yes, it does. Excellent. Excellent. So now we can take actually the input from here. So placing these uh, modules actually requires a little bit of uh, checking how you get the uh, signal routed to the system. Okay. Um, so now we can basically start uh, making the uh, selecting the inputs either from here or from there. And there's the first one is the data format. Unsigned is okay. Unsigned integers. Resolution. Well, resolution is co then uh, uh, basically inversely proportional to the sample rate. Higher sample rate, less resolution. That's the sigma delta how it works. So it's basically sigma delta. Uh, sample rate and resolution. So if you have sample rate and resolution, it goes like that. You know, that, that's, that comes from the sigma. So that's the same as the first order Lopez filter. Okay, good. And just a small reminder, this also takes some digital blocks because it basically uh, requires also the uh, sample clock rate. And the switch capacitor sections, they don't work unless you have a clock there. Okay. So, um, now I need to take a look at the data sheet. I think this sample rate given here is uh, kilo samples per second. So if we if you have a 14 bit resolution, it means that you your sample rate is 30 samples per second. Oh, okay. Well, that actually fits just fine for our purposes uh, almost, but on the exercise I want to have a little bit higher sample rate. So let's see if we take that one to about 118 uh, and then we need to take a look at the data sheet. Can we do that? Okay, we can uh, get 11 bits. Don't try to use 14 bits since I would guess that you are getting garbage out of the uh, A2D converter. So try to match 
the data sheet uh, sample rate versus the uh, resolution table. Okay. Ah, now it's okay, 108. Yeah, yeah. Input. Not plumb from uh, reference low, but analog column input multiplexer. There. It comes, uh, the signal comes from, oh, from uh, the, uh, this multiplexer here, which is currently connected to port zero, zero. That's excellent. All right. So we can actually also have this PGA, a pro pro programmable gain amplifier here and run it at, for example, eight, with a gain of eight. Gain of 16, there's a chance that we are saturating the input of the HUD. Hmm? Gain, we can actually put some extra gain. So, so it's, uh, yeah, yes. Maybe. <laughs> uh, the reference, okay, reference here matters, since reference can, uh, for the A to D converter, can be either here, which is the analog ground, or at the uh, uh, zero, which is the VSS. Using the analog ground actually would also affect on the gain. So our signal is somewhere here, and we want to multiply this one. Not that difference. Selecting the reference to analog ground would actually multiply this difference to, by eight, meaning here. Okay, so we need to take, uh, select the uh, reference to BSS. Um, all right, so analog ground output disable uh, offset compensation. Okay, what is the offset compensation? Let's see what it is all about. Parameters, parameters. For more details on correlated dub double sampling, refer to application note. Ah, okay, we have uh, the VSS as a reference, so we are not use, using the offset compensation. Yeah, but that has something to do with getting a little bit better performance in some cases. Okay, so now we have more or less the uh, easy HUD converter uh, ready for doing the uh, uh, calculations. Then of course you need the timer, timer to uh, do the interrupts. Uh, yesterday you already had a timer there, was it 16 bit timer uh, to give the uh, about two second, uh, yeah, was it two seconds? No, no, half second. Yeah, yeah. interval ti timers, so timing is. I would guess you can do the same timer also in here. And parameter size the same way as yesterday. Okay. Ah. Timer 16. Um, on the software side, you need to do this. <laughs> that one. Okay. So, on the software side, um, let's 
C. You need to start start the modules enable interrupts. Okay, and then you need to have the while one loop. which checks if uh, conversion, not conversion, but uh, if it is uh, time to uh, 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 display. If it does, then it displays or actually Then calcu Oops. calculate the uh, sum divided by norm and display it. Okay, and that's all you need to do there. Uh, well, maybe go to sleep. Uh, what else you need? You need interrupt service routines. So one for the uh, uh, for uh, uh, the, the, the uh, timer. Yeah. So one for the timer. which gives you that uh, the so this is the uh, actually sample rate the fs timer so it's sap this, this is our sampling timer for the output yeah sampling rate timer good and then uh okay you need also okay you need actually also a routine for the uh, ADC, I interest service routine for uh, uh, to uh, okay calculate hmm. sum and increment num. All right. And of course, uh, this one uh, is the uh, for easy ADC. So easy ADC is a self-running, which means that it has its own uh, interrupt service routines that take care of uh, the uh, uh, stuff there. Uh, how? Uh, let's take a quick look at. Easy ADC, um, let's see, yeah, in dot ASM. So same way as yesterday, interrupt service routines. Also the easy ADC, all the interrupt, interrupt code is on that assembly file. It has a little bit more code than uh, earlier because, well, that's uh, the uh, engine for the a to D converter. So, yeah, I'm not really interested about that section. What I'm interested about is find a place where we have a conversion ready. Insert your custom code above. So I would guess Yes, sample data is now in I results, so you can add your own code right here. So 
So not a long jump anymore. You cannot use long jump, but long call, since you still need to come back for that stuff. And basically, you also would like to... Ah, OK. Interest service routine has already preserved the values of the A register. If you need to use the a X register, you must preserve its value and restore it before to return to in interrupt. We don't know if the C compiler is using also X register. So uh, basically, uh, on uh, yesterday, there was uh, these uh, couple of commands to restore and uh, save the, uh, the register values. Take a look at that code. So this this is quite important that you you still you know uh, that the processor somewhat does what it's supposed to do <laughs> even after calling your own the uh, own code uh, my C and this would be decimator. Okay, save that one. I close. Okay, that can be there. And basically, here is your void function. Which does the num plus plus sum plus equals whatever. Uh, take a look at the API of this uh, A2D converter. It's easy to the ADC to find out how do you read the value. Couple of comments. Uh, remember that this num and sum are now accessed on both on the decimator and also on the uh, main loop so basically you, you need to have the, uh, these on global variables uh, num can run up to 180 ish so character would be enough right yeah initialize to zero but then we have 11 bit A2D conversion. But uh, we also, we are uh, calculating the sum. Yes, yeah, so basically we, we are summing up and then after everything is done, then we uh, divide it. And sum can actually add seven more bits into that one in maximum. The worst case scenario is that we need 11 plus 7 bits. So we need at least 18 bits, uh, so long int, not int, but long int, 32-bit int. Uh, uh, float, floating point operations without the floating point accelerator coprocessor would take a uh, few hundred <laughs> clock cycles each, so, so it's better to use just integer as as far as you can. You know the the, the uh, these uh, floating numbers that, uh, on microcontrollers, eight bit microcontrollers, those those would be kind of a uh, waste of uh, resources. Uh, but anyways, this one would be. Uh, uh, unsigned long int. Ah, oh, sum. Okay. A uh, couple of notices. To make sure that you actually have the uh, same 
type values on calculations, uh, you need a lot of typecasting in here. So cast it to same before uh, adding, just to be on the safe side. The compiler should take care of that, but well, I don't trust the compiler. <laughs> And this is basically uh, a, a kind of standard way of doing stuff. Okay, uh, then another thing, when you display the display routines, uh, how to actually those work, that's another thing. Okay. Uh, Calculate sum and num and display uh, k uh, raw value and then calculate the temperature. So this one needs some scaling calibration. So one degree Celsius is 10 millivolts. That's one scalar. Then we had the, uh, okay, uh, we had also the gain of eight on easy A to D conversion. Then, okay, uh, one we didn't actually check yet let me save that one and go here and look, look at the global resources. And so basically we haven't checked yet the uh, reference multiplexer. And when we are running this uh, 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 five volt A to D, uh, five volt system, then we can use actually I think two times band cap plus minus band cap. One one band cap is uh, 1.3 volts, I think. Was it 1.3? Hmm. Need to check it from the uh, internet. Let's ask internet. Uh, band cap, band cap, band cap. What is, does it say about the band cap? Huh? Uh, what? Gap. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Band cap. Okay, better. Uh, what is band cap? Okay, maybe we, we can. <laughs> yeah, it tells about the diodes. And okay, there we have. Okay, it's about 1.3 volts. So I remembered it just about correctly. So. Menu maximum, yeah, that that actually typical piece of band gap performance. So specification says, well, it's 1.3. We can use the 1.3. So well, the um, that one would be 1. Uh, 2.6 volts plus minus. Wait a minute, no. Sorry. Uh, ah, that's even better. So basically the problem with that uh, two times band cap is that we are missing the, uh, uh, the, the lowest values and we need those for lowest values. But 1.6 times band cap plus minus 1.6 times band cap, 1.6 times band cap is about two volts. 
roughly about two volts. And this one includes all the, also the zero. So it's about zero to four volts, uh, uh, the, the uh, range. Right. Am I correct or am I correct? 1.3 times 1.6. Two point oh eight. Okay, it's about yeah. So yes. Um, so the, another scaling factor here. Okay, generate the configuration files. So basically, we have. 11 bits max or actually 0 if uh, 0 x um let's see 1 2 3 oh is it 7 f is the same as 4. Point, about 4.16 volts okay so you need to do some conversions here. 11 bits and is equal to the highest value on A to D converter is the same as the uh, same as the, the two times band cap. Yes. No, no, two, uh, two, two times, yeah, the, the two times 1.6 times band cap. So it's the full range. So that that's 1.6 times a band gap. Yeah, that was 2.08. Yes, roughly, with some uh, tolerance. Okay, so uh, the first thing what you need to do is to get the A to D conversion results. So I, I, if I was you. I wish you, I was probably just uh, forget the uh, interrupts for 401 and just get some results to the LCD. And that's the first text task in any case. And see if that uh, value actually makes sense, meaning that if you heat the, uh, uh, the sensor with your finger, you can see the uh, increasing values. And when we cool it by a finish fingertips, <laughs> <laughs> that it goes down. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that that's the first task. The other, uh, the second task is to make this uh, uh, the um, this decimator running. So have a hook up on on the uh, easy A to D conversion, and have this one running. And uh, then maybe display those once in a while, uh, debugging, and then basically uh, the sampling timer. So two times a second, it should give values which are somehow related to this. Uh, so calculate sum and num, display, uh, just for fun. Uh, now, now we are talking about uh, values which are volatile, meaning that they can disappear at any time. This one here is uh, interrupt-driven routine, and uh, basically, when you are calculating the sum, how you can be sure that your sum and num are from the same round? The only way to make sure that uh, this happens is that you stop ADC, then calculate sum divided by num, and after those are saved, then uh, restart ADC. Otherwise, you know, calculation does not necessarily give you what you want. Um, and well, well, uh,
reinitialize those values. <laughs> Since you need it only to calculate the uh, sum between uh, sum and, and the number of values uh, during that half second time. Okay, so that's the whole thing. You just need to fill in the blanks. Good. Any questions? Not yet. <laughs> okay, if you get some, uh, I will be here. 